Well, David Korn, you had a scoop this week in Mother Jones uh, regarding a video that Mitt Romney, uh, that made of Mitt Romney's comments at a May fundraiser. Why did this, uh, why did this video have such impact? Do you think? Uh, it's a good question, and I'm you know pretty close to the story. Uh, it took me a couple weeks to obtain the video from, from, from a source, and when I first got it, I started watching it, and the first 20, 30 minutes, it was a lot of stuff that you would expect Mitt Romney to say, why he, you know, his biography, how great his campaign's going, and all this sort of stuff. There were a few interesting things. He jokes about it would be better if he, his father had been born of Mexican parents, he'd have an easy shot at it, and some interesting things about in the Middle East, which we put up on... Uh, MotherJones.com, but then when I got about halfway through, and he was asked this question uh, that led to the 47% remark, it was sort of a stunning moment. He was speaking with such utter conviction and passion, and it really sort of indicated, I think, a mindset that he saw the country as divided, you know, half of it between people who he considered to be parasitic moochers who don't take personal responsibility for their lives. I know, in, you know, the last few days he and his campaign have tried to put a policy-oriented spin on this, that he was talking about entitlements, we have to move from a government-centered society, and those are all the type of debates that we have all the time, and I think they're great debates for this country. But the way he talked about this was not in those terms. It was very visceral, and the great thing about video is that everyone could see this for themselves, and I think most people reached the same conclusion. And if people haven't seen it, if they go to my um, Twitter feed afterwards, I'll put up all the links, David Korn, DC, but it's really, I think, you know, worth watching because you see Mitt Romney uncut roar behind the scenes and I think everybody wants to, everybody wants to see candidates like that to get a sense of who and what they're, they're, they're really like. Matthew Cutnany, this got a lot of attention this week. Is it important? Is it something that creates real problems uh, for Mitt Romney or is it one of those things that'll be uh, fewer today and forgotten tomorrow? I don't know how significant an impact it will have on the campaign overall, but I do think it has a significant impact on the opinion of conservative elites about Mitt Romney. Because what we're beginning to see over the past week is that conservative elites here in Washington, D.C. are beginning to decouple themselves from the Romney candidacy. And so you've seen a bunch of conservative journalists, uh, you've seen a bunch of some conservative candidates, uh, such as Scott Brown um, and Linda McMahon in the, in the Northeast, distancing themselves from Romney. And that doesn't bode well uh, for his campaign. Is that because they've concluded he's going to lose and they don't want to go down with the sinking ship? Or why the decoupling? Well, it's because they, dis they fundamentally disagree with him. I mean, it's not only that the, the statistics he were using were, were misleading or inaccurate. It's also that they reflect a, a static model of politics that I don't think a lot of conservatives have. You know, the Reagan-Kemp vision is very dynamic. And when you, you look at people who are receiving government benefits, they don't all receive those benefits consistently. You know, many of them are retirees who are the Republicans' core vote in this election. So it, it, it didn't reflect, I think, a conservative mindset that, that shared uh, among many uh, elites here in D.C. Gene, what do you think? Is this important? Yes, I think that it is important. And it's important, I think, in, in not a uh, black and white way. I think if you take this week and you take last week with the killing of the Libyan ambassador and the uh, Mitt Romney's management of that afterwards, that went to a test of leadership and credibility. And this goes to a test of likability and compassion. And in both cases, he he failed those tests. And so... For voters who are trying to figure out, how do I connect with a candidate? How do I pick the candidate that I want to support, that I want to see in the White House and trust with the power of the government for the next four years? That's where I think he hurt himself, on those kind of measurements of, of leadership and of cares about me.